what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today I am super excited because I've got my hands on the most powerful laptop that I've ever been able to review on the channel now this is known as the MSI Raider GE 77HX and this thing is an absolute beast it's powered by a 12th gen Intel 16 core 24 thread CPU and it's all backed up by an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti just like a lot of other laptops on the market, you can pick this up in a couple different SKUs and you can go all the way up to a 3080 and an i9 if you want to, but this one here has the 12800HX and the RTX 3070 Ti, which in my opinion is more than enough power for a laptop. I was really surprised to find out that MSI is packing a 99 watt hour battery in this laptop and when it comes to laptop batteries that's a massive battery but at full boat this thing will be pulling some wattage so they've also included a 320 watt power supply. It's not a dual power supply like we've seen in the past but it's a pretty beefy power supply as you can see. Now before we go any further I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Micro Center. There's no way I could get my hands on one of these without them. So this video is sponsored by Micro Center. I want to give them a big shout out for sending this over for review. If you're not familiar with Micro Center and you're a tech enthusiast then you really should be. They have real brick and mortar stores that you can walk into and put your hands on the product before you purchase it. They've got 25 stores across the US, best selection, awesome prices, and a really knowledgeable staff. So if you're in there trying to pick out your laptop or desktop desktop, all you got to do is ask somebody and they'll honestly tell you if it's going to work out for your use case scenario. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave some links in the description. So like I mentioned, this laptop is the MSI GE 77HX and it's a pretty big laptop given that we have a 17.3 inch QHD display at 240 hertz. So we've got a 1440p display here with a three millisecond response time and 100% DCI-P3 rating. And this thing looks absolutely amazing. I've already done some testing on it. When it comes to the keyboard, we've got a Steel Series per key RGB keyboard, so all of these can be programmed individually. We've got 102 keys here. Plus, if you take a look at the front, we've got that RGB bar there, and this can also be fully customized. In this video, we're going to run some benchmarks and test out some PC games on this monstrous laptop. But before we do that, let's go over the specs real quick. And I definitely want to pull the bottom off just to take a look at the heatsink and any upgradability that this laptop has. So when it comes to the CPU, we've got the Intel i7-12800HX. We've got 16 cores, 24 threads, and with this we get 8 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. Turbo on the performance cores is up to 4.8 gigahertz. Turbo on the E cores is up to 3.4. This has 16 gigabytes of DDR5 pre-installed running at 4,800 megahertz. When it comes to the GPU, we've got the RTX 3070 Ti. Keep in mind, this is a laptop variant with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. A one terabyte NVMe SSD, plus there's an extra slot wide open to upgrade the storage on this thing. A 17.3 inch 1440p 240 hertz anti-glare IPS display. It does have Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2, plus killer E3100G Ethernet. A four cell 99 watt hour battery. It weighs 6.39 pounds and is running Windows 11 Pro right out of the box. So yeah, with these specs, we should be seeing some really great performance, and there's not much that won't run on this unit. I also wanted to give you a look at the internals. As you can see, that battery is absolutely massive, being a 99 watt hour battery. We've got two M.2 slots here. Both of them are going to support NVMe M.2 SSDs, and one's going to be populated by a one terabyte drive, so the other one is open, so we can upgrade the storage on this pretty easily. As you can see, the cooling system on this thing looks pretty crazy, and MSI has done something interesting here. They're actually using their new phase change thermal pads instead of thermal paste. These pads won't crystallize like thermal paste down the road, and it provides next generation cooling for the latest Intel HX processors. So the first thing I wanted to take a look at were a couple benchmarks that I ran. First up, we've got Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core score of 1781. Absolutely amazing single core here. And remember, we've got 16 cores, 24 threads, so multi is also looking really great here with a 14,859. When it comes to GPU benchmarks, the first one I went with was 3D Mark Fire Strike. We got a total score of 27,874. And finally, we've got Time Spy here with an 11,996. And with a little bit of tweaking, remember this is all stock. I didn't do any overclocking on the GPU. I'm sure we could break that 12,000 mark. So yeah, this thing's definitely putting down some power. But these are synthetic benchmarks and I'm really more interested in real world gaming performance. So let's go ahead and test some PC games out. 
So jumping right into it with Elden Ring, totally maxed out, 1440p, I had a great feeling that this game was going to run well. Now this does require a pretty powerful CPU and GPU when you go to maximum settings. But, uh, you know, with that 3070 Ti and that 12800HX, it's no problem at all to run this at 1440p. And if we went out of HDMI from the back of this unit, I'm pretty sure we'd be able to do 4K with this game. Next up, we've got God of War at 1440p Ultra, no DLSS yet. So we can run this over 60, and if you went ahead and turned VSync on, you'd have a great time with it. But if you did want to get a little more out of it, given that we do have a higher refresh rate display on this laptop, we could always turn DLSS on. And really, when it comes down to it at these higher resolutions, personally, I don't notice much of a difference in the fidelity. So we're going to go to Ultra Performance with DLSS. And instead of getting an average of around 67 FPS, we're now at around 84 on average. But yeah, this thing is putting out some really good performance when it comes to God of War. And like we saw, we can run this at 60, we can lock it from the settings in the game, or we could just turn VSync on and no DLSS. Checking out Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, Ray Tracing Ultra. Now if you've ever tried this game with Ray Tracing on a card that supports Ray Tracing, you know how hard it can be. We can't quite hit 60 with ray tracing set to ultra. Now, if we went down to 1080p, yeah, we could definitely do it. But I'm going to see what we can do with RT enabled at medium. We're just not getting the performance that I want out of this. So I'd say the best way to play this game is no ray tracing, ultra, 1440p, and play away. With it set up like this, 1440p, ultra, no ray tracing, we're good to go. By the end of this run here, I had an average of 76 FPS, not bad at all. Of course, it's an older one, but it's still one that I personally love to play. We've got The Witcher 3. 1440p, totally maxed out, hair works is on, I mean everything is at the max, and I knew we'd have a good time with this game here, definitely came out a long time ago, but it still looks absolutely amazing, and especially at ultra settings with these higher resolutions. Hey, yeah. I always throw this in because it is my favorite racing game right now. We've got Forza Horizon 5, 1440p, Extreme, and again, I really do think that going out of HDMI or USB Type-C video out, we could do 4K with no resolution scale at ultra settings, but 1440p, Extreme, we're getting an average of 85 FPS out of this one. And finally, we've got Spider-Man Remastered, and going into this, I was pretty sure we'd have to use DLSS given that it's a newer game. They still need a little time to optimize it, but here it is at 1440p Ultra, no DLSS, and we can get an average of 98 FPS out of this, even swinging through the city here. And indoors, it jumps up to around 130 to 140 FPS, but as you know, most of the time we're going to be swinging around here, so I figured I'd just go ahead and show off the city. Overall, really impressed with the performance here, and yeah, it's definitely the most powerful laptop that I've been able to take a look at on the channel, but it's not cheap. I mean, these things can definitely get on up there. So like I mentioned, this video is sponsored by Micro Center, and I want to give them another big shout out. And if you're a new customer, they actually have a coupon right now over on their website. I'll leave a link for it in the description. But this is a coupon for $25 off any processor in store. And basically what you're going to do is fill out the coupon form online. You'll get the coupon and you can go in store, pick out any CPU from the shelf and get $25 off. So if you're interested in this, link will be in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this laptop, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in checking out the MSI GE77, link for that will be in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.